Boxing Series was announced this week. The Super 6 World Boxing Classic, which will see six super middleweight boxers in a round-robin tournament. The likes of Carl Froch, who we'll talk to very soon, Mikael Kessler, Jermaine Taylor, Arthur Abraham, this very exciting German fighter, have all signed up for it. Mike, tell us how it's going to work. Well, the first three fights have been put in place. Carl Froch is going to take on a young American, Andre Durrell, like himself, with a good amateur pedigree. In fact, Carl was saying himself this week, and I'm sure he'll tell us again shortly, that Durrell has, has got the makeup that maybe a year ago Carl had. Unbeaten, fresh, hungry, skillful. Jermaine Taylor, who Carl beat last time out with 14 seconds to go, is up against the German stroke Armenian, who's moving up from middleweight, Arthur Abraham, and Mikhail Kessler, who gave Joe Kawasaki, one of the hardest nights of his career, will fight the only American gold medalist from the 2004 Olympics, Andre Ward. So those are the first three fights in stage one of what they're called. And, and from there on, the rest of the fights will be made through to 2011, where the best four will fight in semi-finals, and then the best two will fight off for the ultimate trophy. It's a, it's a total of, was it five? I think it's a total of five fights that the winner will have to have. Twelve fights in total over a two-year period with a minimum of $15 million being spread uh, uh, between them. Now, what I found interesting, I got a tip off last night, Mike, and I've stood it up today. The semi-finals and the final... You know, which is a long way down the line. We, you know, we would have had uh, nine fights by then. It would have generated an awful lot of excitement, just like Carl's last fight. The, the last three fights, two semi-final and a final, will be shown, so I'm reliably told, on terrestrial TV in America. Wow. This exactly, exactly. That's the only response to that. I can't even think when there was a big fight last on terrestrial TV. It was probably early Sugar Ray Leonard career. So you may be going back 20 odd years. And it's by staggering. then you'll have a narrative, Steve. You'll know these boxes you know so well by and then. That's what their plan is. OK, more on that in a few minutes, but I think it's full-time at Headingley, David Owen. So let's bring in the WBC Super Middleweight Champion, Carl Froch, to talk to us about this Super 6 series. Good evening, Carl. Good evening. How excited are you by the prospect of this tournament taking place? It's only just sinking in. I've been on the um, press tour. I was in New York um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and the Saturday, Sunday part of the press tour was basically fulfilling the obligation to Showtime in terms of getting the, the photography and all the um, all the filming done for the promotion material for the Super Six. But it's very exciting stuff. I mean, can you imagine what this is going to do for the winner of the tournament? You start against Andre Dirrell, who's undefeated. How dangerous is he going to be for the first one? I've not had a proper look at him, but I've seen him. He looks fast. He calls himself the Matrix. I can see why. He's got very fast hands. He's got blurring hand speed. And um, he's, he was an Olympic. I think he won a bronze medal in the Olympics in 2004. So he obviously knows his stuff. Um, I think the, the bigger fight um, out of the two Americans is potentially Andre Ward. But well, Durrell's an unknown quantity. He's, he's a young, hungry, ambitious, fast hands, tall, southpaw. So he's a nightmare in every sense he, of the word opponent. He really is. He is an absolute nightmare in every sense of the way. Carl, just to explain to the listeners and, 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 and to us maybe here how the points will work and how the tables will be designed and how the cut-off in theory will take place. Well, um, from my point of view, if you put it from my perspective, I've got three fights initially, mm -hmm. um, as have all the fighters. And your first three fights, you get a chance to accumulate points based on winning and drawing. And obviously, if you lose, you don't get any points. Mm. Two points for a win, one point for a draw, um, with a bonus point for a knockout on a win. So I'm going to be looking for three points because I'm, I'm a big puncher. Um, basically, after everybody's had the first three fights, the two fighters out of the six, so the six fighters, two out of the six with the least points accumulated will be dropped out. So there'll be four fighters out of the six go forward into a straight semi-final. So there'll be two fights, and which will leave two fighters, two men standing, which will be a grand final. Carl, st 2011. Carl, stay with us for a minute. We've got full-time Froch, the WBC super middleweight champion, on the line. Carl, what could this mean for boxing? I mean, Steve and Mike have just been talking about the prospect of the, the, the last three fights being on terrestrial television in the United States. What could that mean for boxing's future? Bearing in mind there are all these other uh, contact sports that are appearing on the landscape to apply pressure to boxing and take away potential audience. Well, it's going to put boxing on the map and at the forefront of the um, television broadcaster's minds because 
a, a tournament of this magnitude, especially it's going to be built up over two years, the semi-final and the final, it's going to be a massive occasion. And the fighters in, in, in that stage of the tournament are going to become household names. So everybody's going to want to watch them to see how they do. So it's great for the sport. And I know we've got another few sports coming through with the MMA and that, but I think it's positive that contact sports are, are on the... Um, television and a bit of competition is always always you can look at it negatively but i think it's healthy i really do no. carl a couple of points um will any of the second matches be arranged before the first matches are over do you know um, how it's going to work in that sense I, I think that they are i mean it's not being officially announced yet um and i, I don't know if i'm i'm supposed to say um well you but, may as well because we won't tell anybody <laughs> Well, you know, you hear Chinese whispers and things come out and leak and it's not supposed, you're not supposed to hear this and that, but I've got a feeling mm. I'm going to be fighting Mikel Kessler in my second fight. Wow. Now, what a fight that's going to be. Absolutely. Because WBC, WBA, and like I said, it's not official, but it's looking like I've got Kessler in my second fight after Durrell. And, and you all know the rules, win, lose or draw, you pick your points up. Yeah, yeah. So regardless of what happens in the first fight, and I'm extremely confident I'm going to be producing a knockout in my first fight. From, really a, from a purely selfish perspective then, Carl, being from Nottingham like you, we'd like to see Frocked Kessler at the Ice Arena in Nottingham and get all the boys in. Well, we'll go one better than that and we'd like to see it at the city ground, to yeah. be honest. That, that's because, even better, yeah. Because in Copenhagen, <laughs> they'll be pulling that roof over on that stadium where we've seen exactly. several fights and having about, about sort of 60,000 people in there. Is it realistic, yeah. Carl, you could get that one in your hometown, Kessler? It is realistic, yes. Um, obviously, all the promoters are going to work together on this, and that fight would be co-promoted by ourselves and by, um, I'm not sure, Steve Sourland. would go... Sourland. By uh, we'll Sourland. So, Sally Sourland. Yeah, obviously, whichever makes more financial sense, then we'll go. But it's not. you can't rule out Nottingham. I mean, the first fight's in Nottingham, mm -hmm. and um, if the second fight makes sense, we'll bring it to Nottingham as well. But like I say, my first fight's definitely Andre Durrell. He's a big threat, and that's the fight we're pushing at the minute in October, October 17th. Well, um, it's exciting times. It's, a, it's an unbelievable tournament. It's, it's the cream of the crop out of the super middleweight division, and it's just a pleasure, and it's exciting for me to be involved because I'm serious about fighting the best, and this is a chance for me to prove myself. And when you were on the press tour, Carl, did you get a different feel about it all from any of your, your previous fights? And You've been in some big nights, but it, was there a, an extra buzz about this? Because I know that a lot of people I've spoken to in boxing uh, almost can't believe that something like this is happening. It's so good. Yeah, there was. I mean, I was working with them very closely on the photographs um, on the Saturday. And on, on the Sunday, we were doing filming for the for the adverts and the promos and the build-up. So I was rubbing shoulders with Mikel Kessler. I've, I've actually befriended Mikel Kessler, and he's, he's very similar to myself. He's, he's a proud warrior, and we've, we've got common interests at heart, and I won't go into it. But we, we've sort of gelled as, as personalities. <laughs> and I was rubbing shoulders with Darrell and Ward, and, um, you know, Jermaine Taylor, he, he seems to be okay with me. But he, I mean... It, his promoter said he's finding it difficult to come to terms with that loss because it was 14 seconds and, and I pulled the stoppage out of the bag. Uh, but he's OK. But like, like I said to Mikel, look, there's going to be respect before the fight and respect after the fight, but not during the fight. And he's read somewhere that I'm going to try and decapitate him. And when he asked me about it, I says, yeah, I did say that. And I mean it as well. If I get a chance, metaphorically speaking, I will decapitate you because that's boxing. Yeah. Um, but there is a different buzz about it and it, it, there's an exciting buzz because you're looking around the room and you're thinking... I'm fighting him, and I'm fighting him, and regardless of what happens in the fight, I'm fighting him, because the point system, it's like a Champions League of boxing, it really is something different, and it's exciting. Carl, thanks for the insight tonight, we wish you well. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot, that's Carl, Carl. Carl Frotch, the uh, WBC super middleweight champion.